Milton Harris's license was suspended last November, and um, what we got today are the findings of the licensing committee, that, which is considering whether um, he should get his license back. And it's uh, it's pretty damning verdict. Um, they find that he is uh, certainly not a fit and proper person to have a trainer's license for, for three principal reasons. Um, first of all, there's there's financial issues relating to um, the way he conducts his business. And this is pretty similar to um, the scenario of when he lost his license in 2012 um, involving the way he does business um, in terms of payments in cash, doing things on a handshake. But more seriously, perhaps, um, they then go on to discuss other aspects of, of the evidence they heard from, from a number of witnesses uh, and that's concerning, in, in particular, a, a campaign of, of bullying and intimidation against his neighbour, who's the trainer, Simon Earl. And uh, that was quite sustained over a long period, involved a lot of um, altercations, uh, verbal abuse uh, and intimidation, and also uh, serious uh, concerns around safeguarding issues at the yard. And perhaps this is going to attract the most attention because i mean there are there are issues in there that that are of considerable concern in particular in relation to uh harris's treatment of two uh female uh employees at the yard or i mean girls um they, they were both under 16 at the time and um the the evidence that they gave to the panel was, was accepted by the panel as as being um in, entirely believable and um it does does not show um the the procedures or, or harris's uh approach to to the staff uh, in in a good light at all no uh, we, we've, we've touched on the, the main sort of three points if you will that the monetary side of things the uh, the bullying side of things the safeguarding that the safeguarding is one that we'll focus on now what what did the panel find in, in regards to the safeguarding aspects well, there were there were two two witnesses in particular who who gave evidence, uh, and the first of them that they were both referred to um, for obvious reasons by by their by by initials, uh, and one S J O, um, who uh, was at the yard between the ages of fourteen and sixteen, and there are a number of uh, issues there that caused considerable concern. Um, she received an awful lot of uh, WhatsApp messages uh, from uh, from Milton Harris. Um, he had a an account that was just um, that set up just specifically to message her, um, which um, he gave the, um, the he gave the title of um, "lovely young girl," and so he would know that they were the messages um, that, that were to and from her. And um, the avatar on 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 his account was was a picture of, a, of an adult naked uh, female woman. Um, the the messages often um, were taken around towards sexual innuendo and deeply inappropriate um, matters to be for a for a trainer to be discussing with, with a young girl. Um, there were also instances where. Milton Harris would, would would often go to to where she was staying. Um, he would he would stand in the doorway of her room, um, and overall, that the the panel decided that it was just a a, a pattern really of, of deeply inappropriate behaviour. That that they do make the point, um, they make it a couple of times. That they don't believe it was it was an the basic motive was sexual gratification. Um, at the same time, um, they they cannot escape the conclusion that it was just deeply, deeply inappropriate. Um, in, in regard to the other, the other witness was referred to as LHR. Um, she was actually younger at the time um, when she was in the yard. She was between the ages of 12 and 14. And uh, there's an incident detailed where she was driven up onto the gallops by Milton Harris. And when she tried to get out of the car, she found that the door, there was a child lock apparently on the door and she couldn't actually get out of the car. Now, M Milton Harris made a joke about this. He, he said something along the lines of he, he likes to keep all his girls locked in, um, which 
um, that the panel said they didn't think there was any sinister motive involved here, but this was clearly something that had disturbed um, the, the, the young girl who gave evidence to the panel and, and again, was entirely uh, inappropriate and she was quite right to be disturbed by it. Absolutely so, yeah, which is easy to see on on that part. I mean, the, the BHA have come out with their, their comments and we'll, we'll hear more from the BHA over the next few days. We'll keep this quite short, but are there questions to ask of the BHA around what has happened? Well, um, this is a decision by the Licensing Committee. I mean, the, the BHA opposed the renewal of Milton Harris's licence and they have won the case. Um, clearly, he has been in front of the licensing committee several times since he was initially denied a license back in 2011 when he went bankrupt and the first uh, he had at least two applications that were turned down before the application was granted in, in 2018 and he got his license back now there were there were a lot of conditions attached to that and that the BHA was was instrumental in making sure there were conditions attached um, which uh, allowed him to get his license back they they were mainly around obviously the the circumstances of the, the previous loss of the license um and they involved him having to record every transaction not being able to, to do anything uh on a handshake basis and um and also not being sort of integral to the to the business side of the yard he was more going to be the trainer rather than the person who's in charge of all the money now the panel make it clear that pretty much from day one, um, he was ignoring that. And he, he was just taking no account of it. So you could ask to some extent how it's taken this long to, to get to the point where he's now had his license suspended back in November and it's, been, it's now been taken away. Um, there's also in the, in the investigation into the campaign against um, Simon Earle, which is also really quite disturbing. I mean, there, there's a lot of detail in there about the things that he was saying to to Earl, the number of times that he confronted him, and and this was going on right up until, um, in fact, November um, last year, which is a point at which uh, Milton Harris had been told quite specifically that he should not um, have any contact with any of the people who um, had been involved in the case, and the. There were BHA investigators went down to try and investigate what was going on between the two the, these two men, and it, it's clear that rather than um, necessarily investigating what was going on and the complaints that that Simon had quite rightly made, um, they seemed more interested in like mediating and perhaps um, trying to find some sort of balance or. Um, yeah, some sort of balance in, in the dispute or, or some way of resolving it. And Simon Earl and his wife seem to have been um, very frustrated by the the BHA investigators not, not really taking their complaints seriously. It is something that's developing all the while. To ask a, a simple question, what happens next regards to the, the, the next chapter to this story? Obviously, it's unfolding throughout the afternoon, but there's plenty more to, to still go. Yeah, well, I mean, Milton Harris has, has given a brief statement to the Press Association saying that he's disappointed by the findings and he's going to make a, a, a statement about the situation in a few days. He says that his initial priority is for the, the horses. There's supposed to be about 75 horses at his stable um, and, and obviously his staff and, uh, and what's going to happen to them. And that's what he'll be focusing on in the first uh, over the next few days um so we await to hear what he will say about it then whether he might appeal or um if there's anything he can do further um it, it is a situation that is going to continue to develop and there there is a lot in the in this finding i mean it it takes a while to read it as with a lot of these things that come out of the bha i i would urge people if they can get a chance to read it do because um, it is it is a tough read in many places, but it, it is all it is part of the process, and it, it will help a greater understanding of of the situation. Um, it, it is a difficult one, and the BHA is doing what it can to 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 progress things at, at, as it as it can and should. Um, we are now living in, in a in a different era to 
to perhaps uh, 20, 30 years ago. I'm old enough to remember working in offices where behaviour perhaps of this sort was A, commonplace and, and B, sort of almost tolerated and, and seen as part of the way things happen. That's not what happens now. It was inappropriate then. It's definitely inappropriate now. But the difference now is that um, it is taken seriously and, and that is what the BHA is doing.